will come um, today, a few weeks now, we've been in a situation which is a bit fam and familiar to most of us in Zambia, but uh, even more to the rest of the people in the world. And we are all seeing what is happening and different responses coming from different quarters of the world. And these responses are probably one of the reasons why I thought we could together uh, listen to God's word and just hear what God has to say in a situation like the one we are in now. A crisis oftentimes will bring out the worst or the best from people's lives. And we are hearing a lot of responses, postings on the media, blogs that are coming, and you start to hear what people are thinking and how people are trying to respond to this situation. Fortunately, God has given us his words, and I think this is one of the times when we should learn to appreciate God's words. Now, when you're in a crisis, sometimes you are short of how you want to respond. You don't even know what to do next. And crises come in different ways. And in Zambia, unfortunately, we are just coming from gassing. And now we have this pandemic which has gripped the whole world. And you look at the big powers, America, China and others, and you start to see how they are trying to cope with the situation, then you realize that even as man may have plans and life may look certain at certain times, we again are made to realize that we are very vulnerable as a people of the world. And I picked up a, script, a, a, a text from Isaiah chapter 38, and I would want us to go to Isaiah chapter 38, read and listen to what God has to say to us through the experience that King Isaiah had. I will just read a few verses, but in explaining, I will also touch a few verses ahead. Let me read from verse 1 to 3. It says, In those days Ezekiel became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says, put your house in order. Because you are going to die, you will not recover. Ezekiel turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with all hearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Ezekiel wept bitterly. Now, if you are familiar with this story, you realize that this prayer of Ezekiel was answered by the Lord and was spared of his life. But the, the scripture tells us that in those days, Ezekiel became ill. Those days are giving us a context of where we are coming from in what happened to Ezekiel. Before Ezekiel became ill, the promised land was invaded or attacked by the king of Assyria. And the northern kingdom of the ten tribes of Israel were utterly defeated and the whole kingdom collapsed. Now the king of Assyria wanted to extend his authority to the southern kingdom. Ezekiel was a direct descendant of David and he ruled in the southern part of the kingdom. And when the northern kingdom collapsed, the king of Assyria moved against the south and demanded them to surrender. We read from the scriptures that Ezekiel got this letter and took it to the temple and spread it in the temple before the Lord. And then he, he prayed. He said, Now, Lord our God, deliver us from his hand, so that all kingdoms on earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. 
That is coming from 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 15 to 19. And we know that God answered this prayer. The king of Assyria was not allowed to touch the southern kingdom. Then we come to 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1, which is similar to what we have read in Isaiah. We read, in those days, Ezekiel became ill. So he is a great king whose prayer was heard when there was a crisis of an attack coming from Assyria. Now when he's trying to settle down in his kingdom, again another crisis struck. God had delivered him from one crisis and now he's facing another. Now the Bible tells us that Ezekiel was one of the best kings that God's people has, have ever had from the time the kingdom was divided into two kingdoms. And the Bible says, particularly from uh, 1 Kings, uh, 2 Kings rather, chapter 18, verse 3, we read, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow him. He kept the commands of the Lord that were given to Moses. And the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. That's a great commendation of a king. And since the divided kingdom, there was no one compared to Ezekiel. Now you can imagine what this crisis brought to the kingdom of Judah and to Ezekiel himself. There he is, he's just come through one crisis and now he's in another crisis where he's afflicted in his body. This happened to a godly man. Now, as he is sick in his bed, God sends a prophet. And the prophet that he sends is Isaiah. And so we read in verse 2, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says, put your house in order, because you are going to die, you will not recover. Ezekiel is sick to the point of death, and the message comes from the prophet. Personally, I would think, oh, the coming of the prophet is going to bring some comfort to me. But instead of comfort, he is given probably the worst message that you could have expected. Now, even today, even as I speak to some of you, you may be experiencing some form of crisis. Maybe an illness in the body, the doctors diagnose a terminal illness. You are not sure whether you are going to recover. Some of you are in a crisis of employment. You had hoped there was a promise that you would be employed. Then suddenly, because of this pandemic, which has gripped the whole world, now you have to wait and you don't know the outcome. And so here is Ezekiel, sick in his bed, and here comes the worst of the messages that any one of us would expect. And he is told, you are not going to recover, you are going to die. Now when we follow this story, we can learn something of how, as God's children, in a crisis of any form, we are probably to respond. And how did Ezekiel respond to this crisis? What can we learn from Ezekiel's response to the crisis? There are two things I would want to bring forward to all of us today. The first one is coming from verse 2. In verse 2 we read, Ezekiel turned his face to the wall and pray to the Lord. 
I don't know whether Isaiah was still in the room and he got this message and the first response instinctively as a child of God in a crisis shocked, affected by this illness and he could probably not be able to stand up and so he just turned his face to the wall and prayed. He is a godly man, seriously sick, weak on his bed, lying there and now comes the news and his response is that he turns to the wall and prays to the Lord, starts to seek the face of the Lord. In most situations for most people in the world, when a thing like this happens, we are all filled with a number of questions that we would want to ask. If I were Ezekiel, probably I would have said, Isaiah, please wait a minute. For how long am I going to live? When is this going to happen? What is God trying to teach us? What is happening? But Ezekiel didn't go into all those things. Many times, many people want to answer the question, why is this thing happening? And this is exactly what we are seeing as response to the pandemic of the COVID-19 from across the world. Postings are coming and surprisingly some people sound or feel like they know why it is happening. I've received a number of postings even on my WhatsApp a box and people are trying to explain even using scriptures that they know why we have this pandemic in the world. Now, here is an example of how as Christians we ought to respond to a crisis. If God has not directly revealed to any one of us why he's doing what he's doing, scriptures help us a great deal that secret things belong to the Lord and the things we need to know he has made known to us. But we want to trade on areas that we should never trade on. But a wise Christian would do well not to speculate on things that we are not sure of. And Ezekiel gives us what we should respond or the way we should respond. And we are told he turned his face to the wall and prayed. Well, he turned to the wall probably not to be distracted from what was happening in the room. As a king, there could have been a few people attending to him, people moving up and down, and he wanted to focus on speaking to the Lord, on praying to the Lord, on seeking the face of the Lord. I guess that's one of the reasons why we close our eyes when we are praying, because we don't want to be distracted by what our eyes may see. So in a crisis like this, I want to propose to all of us that let us spend more time, most of our time, praying and seeking the face of the Lord, talking to the Lord about what is happening in the world today. We can't do it together right now because we are not allowed, but at least we can follow the example of Ezekiel where we can get serious about praying in our homes. We know that because of praying to the Lord, when you read further, the Lord spared his life and allowed him to live another 15 more years. This tells us that prayer is very important in the lives of God's children. Prayer can change the course of history. And we have a number of examples in the Bible of where People were in trouble and God, God's people prayed and because of their prayer, God, you know, answered and the calamity that was promised to come upon them was deviated. So here is the person who is praying, is afflicted and God in his sovereignty allows us to pray and when we pray, the course of history can change. So he's told, put your house in order 
And then he turns to the Lord and he prays to the Lord and the Lord answered him. If Ezekiel had not prayed to the Lord, this is the word of God that came from the prophet of God Isaiah. He would have died. This is what was going to happen. But Ezekiel prayed to the Lord and because he prayed, the Lord answered his prayer. We have the same things happening to the nation of Nineveh when Jonah was sent there and he, he, he spoke 40 days and Nineveh would be overthrown. But because the people repented, the city was spared, it was not destroyed. When God's people pray, the course of history can be changed. So we have an opportunity in our country, we have an opportunity as God's children to pray to the Lord. We don't claim to know what God is doing, but the first instinct of a godly man is to turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us leave the part of analyzing what is happening, the science behind the disease, the search for uh, a remedy, for a vaccine, to other people who are professionals in those areas. Our area as Christians is to pray. That is what we can do and that is what we are asked to do and this is what we are learning from Ezekiel. To pray when you are confronted by a crisis. The first instinctive response should be that of prayer. Now, when Ezekiel is praying, we come to the second point that I want to share with you. In verse 3, we read, Remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Ezekiel wept bitter. What is this trying to teach us? When Ezekiel prays, remember, Lord, how I walked. A few books that I've read have suggested that Ezekiel is asking the Lord to make this kind of message from Isaiah to pass that is not ready to die. He doesn't want to die to go through death at the moment. And so he's kind of bargaining, he's kind of making a deal with God that because he has worked very well with the Lord, then he should be spared of this calamity, of this crisis of this death which looked eminent. But I do not think, like our others have observed, that Ezekiel was afraid to die. But rather, Ezekiel is showing us that his conscience was very clear before the Lord, that he had nothing that could make him not go to the Lord if he died. Ezekiel is not asking for a bargain with the Lord. He's not making a deal. But rather, he was a godly man. But being a godly man, he also knew that he was a sinner. Any godly person should realize that we are prone to sin. And Ezekiel knows that. And in verse 17, he tells us, when you read further in verse 17, he tells us that he was a sinner, but whose sins were forgiven and the Lord had put behind his back. But he's showing us that at this moment his conscience was very clear before the Lord. He walked well with the Lord, he was faithful uh, before the Lord, and so he was not kind of afraid to meet the Lord even in death. But rather, he was comforted. He was ready to die. He knew that he had peace with the Lord, that there was nothing to really make him fear to meet the Lord. He was not probably at this moment guilt of any obvious sin. It's just like Paul tells us when he was about to leave the tent of his body, he tells us, I fought a good fight, I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. It doesn't mean that he had no struggles, but he knew that he had a clear conscience 
And he himself tells us that he, he fought hard, he tried hard, he made all the effort that is for, that he would not be found with a very unclear conscience before God and before men. And so he tells us that he did all he could so that he would always be ready to go at the appointed time when God called him to go. And so Ezekiel is showing us that at this moment there was nothing that would feel, make him feel not to be at peace with the Lord. And so in verse 17 he says, You have put all my sins behind your back. He knew his sins, if he committed them, he confessed them, and he knew he had been forgiven, and by God's grace he tells us how he walked before the Lord. He says, remember Lord, I have walked before you faithfully with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And so he was ready to go. The question I would pose to all of us that are listening to this message, including myself, is when the time comes for the Lord to call us to himself, are we going to have a clear conscience? Are we going to be ready? Are we going to be at peace? Even this moment of the pandemic, when we have coronavirus, if it got us, and if we are to leave this world, are we going to go with a clear conscience before our Lord? We should seek to live in such a way that we are ready for any day when the Lord calls us. Paul says, I always take pains to clear my conscience toward both God and man. He was striving to live such a, in such a way that if God were to call him home at any given day, he would be ready to go. It would be very unfortunate for any one of us who confess and profess to be Christians that when the time comes of that unexpected time in a crisis and you are to go, your conscience is pricked because you know that you have not been living a faithful life before the Lord. Now, crisis, as I said, brings out the best or the waste out of people. And already we can see how the world is responding. Some people are blaming others, blaming the government, blaming this one, blaming the other one. Others are responding in a way that they want to help. And so they are sacrificing their lives courageously, being in the front, putting their lives at, at risk in order to save other people's lives. So here we have friends in a crisis, in a pandemic, as a nation, but also as a world. How are we responding to this? Now, Ezekiel, we are told, wept. Now, that weeping, we don't know, I don't know exactly what happened, but reading further into the story, I find that Ezekiel is a man of God who is also coming from the line of David, and at this time, he had no child yet. His father was so wicked, very different from the son Ezekiel. Ezekiel was very different from the father. And Ezekiel did what was right before the Lord. And now there's this possibility of him dying at this moment. The big question that probably would be asked in the mind of Ezekiel is what next in the promises of God to David that there will always be somebody on the throne from the line of David and also a king will eventually come and rule over the whole world in peace and righteousness. Probably that troubled him so he wept bitterly knowing that if he went there would be no successor to the throne of David. And we know that probably his faith was such that if God spared him and gave him time, probably there would be another person to carry on from the line of David. 
and we are told that he recovered in the 15 years that God allowed him to live and when he died his son who was only 12 years old became king that shows us that the son was born after this crisis when God had healed him and so there was another successor to the throne of David and later on Jesus Christ came from the line of David in the context in which we are today the Good Friday Easter weekend celebrating the grace of God and remembering how Jesus gave his life to us and then looking back here is Ezekiel, Ezekiel sick on his bed, God spared him here is Jesus on the throne and yet was not spared at that moment he died so that Ezekiel's sins would be pushed behind God's back that God would not be able to see the sins of Ezekiel it was a promissory note to the Old Testament people who saw it ahead now for us as we think about Easter we know that the reason Jesus came was that he would die and pay for our sins so in the context of coronavirus and celebrating Easter we should be grateful that we are not left alone God has found a, a solution to the biggest problem of mankind and the biggest problem of mankind is sin and God has dealt with sin so that we would be able to pray to the Lord and the Lord would be able to hear us and Jesus the sinless son of God lived such a wonderful life as king he lived an obedient life to the Lord he walked in righteousness before God and in obedience he died on the cross of Calvary so that we would be forgiven so that our sins would be forgiven so that we would have a clear conscience so that if we were to die any day when we are called by the Lord we would not be afraid to go Jesus lived the good and perfect life that neither you nor I have lived nor will ever live he trusted in God there was no one like him and there will be no one like him before and after he stayed the course of obedience to the father and the father allowed him to take our sins on the cross of Calvary so that you and I can pray and the Lord will hear us you and I can go with a clear conscience because we know our sins have been forgiven I want to ask you if you were to die if we were to go today by anything is your conscience clear that you to go with a cleansed conscience you have to answer that question by yourself now if by any means you know that you have not been living right before the Lord you have either backslidden you are living a wayward life and your conscience is not clear that if you were to be taken today you would go at peace to the Heavenly Father I want to ask you that Jesus came and died for our sins and Jesus can forgive you of your sins so that you would be able to pray and the Lord would hear your prayers and that you, if you were to be taken home you would go with a clear conscience I want to ask you if you have not submitted to the Lord to make him Lord and King of your life today will you come to him in humility and confess your sins before the Lord and ask him to be Lord of your life so that if anything happened to you you would still go with a clear conscience may the Lord bless his words let us pray Heavenly Father we are so grateful that uh, you are always with us in all situations 
even in a crisis. As we look into the life of Ezekiel, we encourage and we have lessons for ourselves that Lord, when you face this crisis of an illness that was at the point of taking him, he turned to you and sought your face and prayed. But also that Lord, he walked before you with a clear conscience because he knew his sins were forgiven. We pray that Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive us of our sins. That for those that have not yet come to you, our Father, by the power of your Spirit, talk to them, encourage them. Lord, give them no rest in anything else other than them coming to the Saviour, Jesus Christ. We are grateful that, Lord, even in the context of coronavirus, you are there with us, always and always helping us and encouraging us. We are so grateful to you. May your name be glorified in Jesus. Amen.